people agree that something is valuable, then they buy it. Right. Yep. I mean, in a nutshell, yeah, that's pretty much what it comes uh, down to. <laughs> yeah, now go be successful and make me <laughs> mad that I told you all these things. <laughs> yeah. So I can be like, yeah, hey, I want to be successful. <laughs> right. Welcome back to Wait in the Dry mini Sods After Dark, <laughs> <laughs> where we talk about all the raunchy and rusty and <laughs> trombone type things. Forbidden <sighs> secrets of composition. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're looking for those, like, um, remember the, the like, late 90s, early 1000s, where they have, like, the late infomercials about, like... Uh, like phone call oh things. yeah <laughs> yeah they did the spoof the gangster hotline <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's Hit the, us up if you guys did not know that's where i got the want to talk some shit <laughs> <laughs> oh really yeah <laughs> check that out <laughs> yeah i don't think i've seen it <clears throat> all right well uh today we have a topic mm-hmm. everyone knows about the mini says no we do topics yeah. and we stay on them more or less. <laughs> like um like a WAP. <laughs> like a WAP. <laughs> <laughs> uh all right. So today we got let's do it, Sergio. What do you got? So this is just something I was just kinda of thinking about the other day. Um I don't remember what made me think of this. I think it was probably just a, a podcast that mm-hmm. uh, was talk was not talking about art mm-hmm. at all, but like it just made me think. Um in like, puberty? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe think about puberty. I know you <laughs> that, that was, was our cracking. topic. I know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I yeah. heard. <laughs> uh, but yeah, just like art business wise, do you think artists kind of they either underrate themselves, but they can also kind of overrate themselves, oh, like yeah. um, like kind of falling back on like the technical stuff, almost being like, okay, well. I paint so good, like, like I don't need to do certain things because, like, I mm. paint so good. I should, I should be above this kind of. I see. Um, and who, like, who, you, who do you have anyone in mind, Sergio? Uh, myself out of <laughs> out of art school, maybe. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but I, I mean, I didn't really think you were gonna name it. I was like, oh shit, he's gonna really name something. <laughs> But no, I, I'd say that's a kind of a common sort of like thought for people coming out of art school, yeah. especially if like you are like the hotshot student there. Mm. <laughs> but um, just thinking about like people who get into art as a career, but thinking like, okay, I'm just going to get so good that I don't have to worry about any of that right. business shit. Well, first we should get it out of the way. If you're the hot shot student coming out of art school, <laughs> you're not that hot. <laughs> you know, you're kind of a loser. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Unless you're like Zoe Milk. <laughs> <laughs> still, She was still probably kind of a loser in the beginning <laughs> when she came out of... Uh, yeah, well, I'm, yeah, I'm not speaking to, to her character in that way. But no, just no. mean, <laughs> yeah. Um, you're not the Fonz, <laughs> yeah. and the Fonz was kind of a loser. That is also true. <laughs> <laughs> he hung out with, he was way out of school, and he hung out with the young, yeah. with the high school students still. Yeah, weirdo. <laughs> yeah. That's what we call those nowadays. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> uh, we call those a risk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We call those me too moments. Um, uh, but, but yeah, so, um. Yeah, I mean, for sure, uh, that could happen. Like, mm-hmm. like your ego can get in the way of being successful. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we, we kind of just talked about that a little bit last right. episode. Yeah, <clears throat> but yeah, yeah, your ego, and like not only that, but like your idea of what an artist is. Yeah, that's more the the like kind of thing I was thinking about as that. Right. <clears throat> you beret wearing motherfuckers, <laughs> right? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> with your cigarettes and coffees in the mornings and your alcoholism at night. <clears throat> yeah, uh, 
and your um, deep thoughts of what your paintings mean, which we all know is a bit bullshit when you're talking about, you know, the cosmic universe uh, <laughs> flowing through your soul or something. All that artist bullshit can, like, go kick rocks as fast as it can because <laughs> fuck all that. And, yeah, because at the end of the day, it's like make good art and hopefully make a living wage off of your good work. Um but that's also the thing that I was thinking could be a bit of a trap about it too, where you get too focused on the art itself without thinking too much about like, what is, what is this art going to do for people who want it? Like, you um, know what I mean? Um, I'm not sure I get what you mean. Um, well, like, I guess one of the things I was thinking of was like, it seems like a a good way to make money with your art is if your art is doing something for people. Um, like not only like an illustration, but also like when people see it, what value do they get out of mm -hmm. seeing it? And um, like, I think a lot of people before they get into um, trying to sell your art for a living they just tend to think like okay well my art is just so good i don't have to worry about like how like the context i'm gonna show it in it's just like i'll just put it out on instagram whatever and that's all i need to do kind of hmm. whereas like i feel like like you doing murals that's doing something for mm -hmm. people that's like giving a community something not only to look at but almost be um like they almost become landmarks in ways mm -hmm. and like i i feel like if you don't have some sort of idea behind like what you're doing for other people uh it it makes it a lot harder to make a living off of doing art hmm. yeah i'm not sure um it may, be, I don't know. <clears throat> I mean, uh, so, so when, when we're talking, like right now, are we trying to define uh, a successful art career? Like, I'm, um, I'm kind sure. of. Well, not even just. I mean, not even a career as a whole, but I mean, just like what it takes to actually sell your art. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> well, okay, so. The way I look at it is like there's like these there's all these like uh, there's all these things you kind of have to either get adequate at or mm -hmm. hire someone to do mm -hmm. to become uh, uh, to to financially pursue your career as an artist. Yeah, and we all know the first. I, I feel like the first big step. Is being technically good enough, and and mm -hmm. that's a big step actually. Like first of all, yeah. like you have to be good at whatever art route you're pursuing, whether it be fucking comic books, painting, whatever. If if you're in the visual arts, you, you might not even mean fucking visual arts, but like if you're in the visual arts, you have to like <clears throat> you have to be technically good enough to consider the people you think are good your peers mm -hmm. and then from there you have to do things like have a unique voice right the, this is all based around your art so you have to have like a unique voice i th I, I personally think you have to have something worth saying mm -hmm. um and i think that 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 those are like the three big parts for creating quality work mm -hmm. and then from there you need to have um marketing which mm -hmm. is a huge thing right uh which lets people know you exist is it the purpose of marketing yeah. so that people know you exist because without people knowing you exist you can't sell work 
So mm-hmm. the more people that know about your work, the better. So that's marketing. Mm-hmm. And then you need the ability to sell that work. Right. Which is another whole skill set. Mm-hmm. It's not just like you putting your stuff on the website. There are people who make shitloads of money being salespeople. That's because it's right. a it's a really big skill. And mm-hmm. for a long time, artists were were the people who built who created the technical ability, unique voice, and something worth saying. Mm -hmm. And the gallery played the marketing and salesperson. That was the relationship. Mm -hmm. Because of social media, marketing is a whole nother thing nowadays. There's very few galleries that do marketing at all, so they become the salesperson. And within that realm, sales and marketing are attached in a weird way Mm -hmm. that if you're good at marketing it might lead to sales. So if us as artists become our own marketers Mm -hmm. because of Instagram or whatever, Mm -hmm. then attached to that are sales, right? And maybe not all sales, but some of the sales are attached to our marketing. Mm -hmm. And so that's why the dynamic between galleries are weird and we have to kind of recreate the relationship in a weird way. That being said, if you think you're a hot shot who came out of art school wearing a leather jacket named Sergio Lopez <laughs> in, in today's atmosphere, uh, it's not good enough. Right. You know, and you have to figure out how to get good at marketing and sales is like the two big other chunks of the missing puzzle mm-hmm. or find someone willing to do that job right. and make enough money that you're okay with cutting them off their chunk um but that's that's the dynamic you have to figure out Mm -hmm. i don't know if this helps what we're trying to talk about um yeah it's definitely part of it but yeah i think that marketing like marketing that comes down to being like okay when somebody sees what you do Mm -hmm. they can see what they get out of like supporting you in some way like whether it's like okay if you're a teacher then that's obvious because it's like you're you're um if i support him i'll supposedly get better at my own knowledge that i don't have yeah and i guess it's a little tougher when that's more it's so that's more i think sales so mm -hmm. the value you you get out is based around sales i think marketing okay yeah maybe i'm confusing i think a, a uh, like for instance, a part of marketing that would be about that would add value would be something like if you watch like um, a story about like an NFL player, right? Mm-hmm. Somehow that that's that, that adds your awareness of the struggles that football player went through, or a rapper, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Any kind of documentary about a celebrity or or any that's all marketing. So you. Not only do you know this person, but then you attach them being a good person or surviving mm-hmm. a struggle. All of this is to build <clears throat> who who the person to to let everyone know who the fuck this person is mm-hmm. and a bit of their story or something. And a lot of what we do as artists with marketing is Instagram. So like that's our big like that's our big platform to like show off our work to maybe add a little bit of personality to conversation. So people know who we are to write shit on our posts so that people, yada, yada videos, whatever the fuck. Mm -hmm. But there's so many more like avenues of marketing. I mean, even just a mural is its own marketing tool. Right. Um, um, and, uh, you know, like this being a podcast, like people who listen to us, get a better better feel of who we are than anyone on instagram will, right you know because they're listening to us have these conversations they know like sergio's a pc you know they know that <laughs> yeah. they'll never second guess that <laughs> right. you know or uh or how good josh is as a human being and <laughs> yeah <laughs> how much they lo- how much people who hire him for murals like him yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how much he's the coolest guy they've ever met <laughs> yeah. um yeah so so yeah so there's there's all these like there's all these pockets but what marketing is is just the idea of get of of just getting people aware of who the fuck you are Mm -hmm. and then the sales part is giving is kind of like the justification for why you should give me your money 
you know yeah uh and and under like being a teach like teaching a class it's already built in i mean right. you can add more to it of like this is what i'm going to teach you mm -hmm. and this is what you're going to get out of it there's a 10 step program so you can be fucking sergio lopez right you know like it's all to explain the value they get from getting whatever you're giving them mm -hmm. and you know <clears throat> artwork is is one of those weird things because all the I, I think it all the time of like why the fuck do people buy paintings right yeah at same. the same time <laughs> i have a shitload of artwork yeah um yeah i don't i don't i don't art is a weird thing in general I, and i think that's why people have trouble buying cds of music <laughs> you know bootleg and fucking tv shows whatever it's right. it's all like art is that weird thing that's extremely valuable but hard to understand why it is right. valuable mm -hmm. <clears throat> and um yeah and I, I i mean you gotta figure that shit out for yourself and uh at the end of the day in, in general people are collectors of things yeah. so you you still have that and that, i think that's a big part of why that's definitely a big part of it yeah, yeah. and uh and that's why you know prints and all the other merchandise are like a nice little thing because people aren't all rich. So like mm -hmm. someone that wants to collect art can collect something mm -hmm. of yours and they can collect other artists, enamel pins or whatever the fuck or prints or whatever. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, you know, and then if you have the ability to purchase original artwork, I personally, uh, like that's all my favorite shit that I own is like original artwork yeah, for from sure. other people. So I don't know why, I just it's my favorite shit. Mm -hmm. Uh I don't know why I enjoy artwork so goddamn much. I, <laughs> yeah. Uh but it just is what it is. It's I can't explain it and I don't get it. I just it just it just is. Right. Why the fuck mm -hmm. does this food taste so good? I don't fucking know. It just does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah. yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Um I think that like if nobody's explained that to you coming out of uh, like if you're just uh emerging as an artist who's trying to sell you your work if nobody's um ever told you that your work has to um like do something for mm -hmm. people beyond just be like a th thing that you're only doing for yourself it makes it a lot harder to sell it i think sure um and i think that's why a lot of people like political work you mm -hmm. know it's like it represents them in some weird way mm, uh, yeah i can see that and their set of values mm -hmm. and that's probably why a lot of people when i was young had like paintings or prints of paintings of jesus or you know things like that <laughs> yeah yeah i mean it makes sense i get it uh-huh <clears throat> uh but yeah yeah i mean it's yeah yeah i don't know um what's i gonna say like when you look at the art that you've collected do you does it like reflect back to you at all like in this uh, that's not why i i mean maybe like my taste of art okay that's about it i think right yeah but like even I, then i feel I, the same way about yeah. my stuff too it's just things i like <laughs> yeah i don't know if it represents me at all maybe i've never really thought about it but um I feel like I have a, at least a decently wide, wide ranging, like yeah, I would collection. say so, for sure. Uh, and if I had more money, I would have other stuff that, <laughs> you know, would probably not make sense to some people, but <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but uh, <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, I definitely think. I mean, look, no one teaches unless you're going to like business school or fucking marketing school <laughs> yeah. thing. like yeah, no one's gonna teach school. you any of this shit <laughs> so you just gotta like either you gotta go pursue these things you know uh or i don't know you gotta figure it out i mean yeah they don't teach you in art school i'm assuming i didn't fucking go to art school <laughs> so obviously i didn't learn some shit but um <clears throat> some shit they don't teach you there yeah but it's it, i think you just have to like it's also like 
you know, there's always that fucking kid in elementary school hustling to sell fucking candy bars. Like, yeah. that motherfucker, I guarantee, doesn't need to be told how to sell something when he's 30. <laughs> yeah. He's got it in him. So, like, there's definitely a natural skill to it. And then some people have to learn that shit. Mm -hmm. And uh, us as artists, I hated the idea of ever having to sell my work. Oh, yeah. Because I... Same. <laughs> um <clears throat> But the more and more I kind of think about it, the more it is a skill that I need to learn and get good at. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you watch YouTube clips. Everything's on fucking. Here's the thing. Everything is on fucking YouTube. You don't need a fucking college for anything anymore. Mm. If, you, if you're going to be an artist, you could learn literally every technique you want to learn for painting or whatever on YouTube or maybe even fucking an online course. Shout out to Sergio. <laughs> or you could fucking... <clears throat> or whatever. You only need to mm. learn the basics and then practice your ass off. Right. And then... And then you need to learn marketing and fucking sales skills. And you can learn all of that shit on Instagram. Whether you're fucking 18 or 55 and you're an artist trying to figure this shit out, mm -hmm. doesn't matter. That shit is on YouTube. You watch as many fucking videos as you can while you're painting or doodling or whatever. And, and let that shit sink in and learn little nuggets every, here and there. Mm-hmm. And you'll fucking be better while you're practicing your technical skills um and hopefully you'll be ahead of the fucking pack yeah that is true but yeah you also do have to like put into practice those things you see on youtube or else it's in one ear out the other for yeah. sure <laughs> yeah yeah for sure so so yeah i mean but if you don't have that here's the other thing if you don't have that in you you don't have it in you like mm -hmm. No need to tell fucking Michael Jordan to practice. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Like, he just did that shit. Yeah. So, if you're like, I hate, I hate when people on you on Instagram are like, I just can't find the motivation. Like, yeah. what do you want me to fucking do? <laughs> right. Like, I can't help you then. Like, right, exactly. You yeah. need that shit. That's the one thing you need to have yourself. Mm -hmm. That I can't fucking, I don't know, go listen to a fucking Gary V or some shit, but I don't <laughs> even think that shit really works. Right. You either fucking have the ability to push yourself mm -hmm. or you don't. You either can trick yourself by, you know, like fucking Michael Jordan, <laughs> some motherfucker saying, like, good game, not really, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, you either. Put in that effort for yourself to find the motivation or you don't. But the fucking education's out there for free on YouTube. Go take that shit. Mm -hmm. like, you have no excuses nowadays. You really don't. Motherfuckers keep complaining about like mm -hmm. not knowing shit. I'm like, shut up. <laughs> like, there's all the basics are on YouTube. Go find the basics. Go learn that shit. Who, if you say it's boring, fuck off. I don't want to hear about it. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? It's like, <clears throat> I don't know, but yeah, but as long as you know what you need to know, which is right. technical ability, marketing, sales, those are the three things to be successful in your art career, mm -hmm. you know, and then you want to make sure that you're scale scalable. Right. That's another important thing. For sure. So that's why merchandise becomes important. Prints become important because you can scale all those things up the busier you get. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah that is actually a, a pretty important thing for people to to know about too yeah so obviously you can't paint faster or you can depending on your style mm -hmm. but your style is your style or whatever you the way you paint is the way you paint right or whatever you like doing that's what you like doing so if it takes long it takes long or if you're really fucking fast you're really fast but if you're slow you got to figure out a merchandise some shit so you can scale things up unless mm -hmm. you're going to scale your prices up yeah. Which is a hard route to go. Right. It's very The higher you get, the fewer there are people willing to pay that for a piece. Yeah, I think that's why a lot of people who do those, who spend hundreds or, or so hours on paintings, they also end up teaching because that is kind of a scalable thing in sure. a way. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. It's just like, yeah, you don't have to always think about your art being the scalable thing. Right. Yeah, I mean, there's there's many different routes. Mm -hmm. It's all about making sure that you don't feel compromised in your route. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> that's, uh, yeah, that's also a whole other 
yeah. thing that talks it's about. That's a whole other mini so topic. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. As far as like technical skill being the one thing for success, I mean, if you land a good gallery, you guys have a good partnership, then you'll probably be fine. Yeah. Uh, and you sell a lot with that gallery. Um, but um, if not, then um, there are other routes. Right. And those routes take having knowledge <clears throat> that you're not going to learn in art school or or whatever school of hard knocks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, it's like, I guess the, the three things you're talking about, the... Um, the pyramid scheme yeah the pyramid scheme yeah yeah i like pyramids so i'm really into this theory here <laughs> yeah. uh, but yeah like if you i guess the the most like self-sufficient way to do it is to to learn and get good at all three of those things but for sure if not then yeah you it, it's getting harder and harder but right. if you're only going to focus on one of the the well the good thing is if you get good technically mm-hmm you have a good product to market, which right. is always a benefit. Right, exactly. So you always want to make sure that you have like, like the technical ability is like good grounds to stand on. Mm -hmm. And then from there, you can build, like the marketing becomes easier because you have a good product. Mm -hmm. And the sales become easier because it's easy to sell something that is good. So it's like, right. if, you're, if you're a fucking Pollock or whatever, um, then you gotta you gotta figure out how to be a really really good fucking salesperson, mm -hmm. and you gotta figure out how to market some bullshit, <laughs> right? Um, because you know because your skill level is not there, right? And, and I guess if you're you gonna could... message about me about this, fuck off! I don't want to hear it. <laughs> I want to hear all genius Pollock is. Gotta get tired of that shit. <laughs> Are people uh, messaging you? Yeah. About oh, I disagree with you about Pollock though because. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're just setting yourself up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know I'll know if they're trying to give me shit. Yeah, I feel yeah. like I know the <laughs> the what is it? Um, it's like the actors of something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, whatever. Uh, but yeah, the, at that point, like if you're if your passion is like sales and marketing, uh, it's like I don't understand why you're even an artist then <laughs> well it doesn't have to be sales i mean it doesn't have to be your passion it just has to be a skill set you have right you know? no but that's what i mean like if you're if you would rather get better at sales and marketing than oh. like the actual art of oh, it oh, okay. <laughs> yeah right, right. <laughs> yeah well, i mean there are I people mean, out there like that but yeah there's plenty of them <laughs> yeah i just don't understand the successful it. artists are the ones <laughs> yeah. that are fucking really talented in marketing and sales mm. Uh, and the ones that are technically good are all fucking sitting around pouting. <laughs> it's like, bitch, we can all learn that shit. Mm -hmm. uh, at the end of the day, we can all get good at those things. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. yeah uh, um, off the top of your head, would you, is there anybody that you would recommend to like uh, to hit or to check out their YouTube or anything that you learned anything good off of? Um, that like painting and drawing guide. You know what I'm talking about? I forget his fucking name. Painting and drawing guide. Oh, he's very boring, but <laughs> he's got a ton of knowledge he shares. <laughs> oh, okay. As far as like color matching shit and oh, okay. Um, and like uh, measurement tricks and shit like that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like all like basic shit. Like. I, I don't know. I mean, I always tell people just like, this is what I always tell people when they ask. I say, go on YouTube, look up how to like do measuring tricks, how like quick measurements, mm -hmm. how to do fucking uh, like uh, blocking in shapes, how yeah. to look at, see value and how to see color. And for the most part, like build on those things. And I'm, am I missing something? I, um, I think like if you work on at least those like seeing shapes mm -hmm. which is like blocking in and measuring shit that helps you like build those like where you get more and more accurate of like seeing how like sh how shapes relate to each other and all that shit and then mm. seeing value and seeing fucking color like if you just work on those three things you'll jump leaps and bounds from if you don't have those skills mm -hmm. and there are plenty right. of so just look just go on youtube and look up fucking color matching or some shit like that 
I just, I don't know. It's weird because I never like thought about how to mix paint. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I can do it. I don't, I honestly don't know why. Hmm. Cause I hear some people have huge issues with it and I don't understand why they have huge issues. Like trying to like, see the color or like yeah, replicate the see color, the color see. and then copy it. Uh huh. I don't know why people can't do it that well. Hmm. I've never like, that's one of those weird things that can't seem to come natural to me hmm. uh, that I, I didn't have that big of an issue with doing. Hmm. And I don't know why. But I'm mean, yeah. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, <clears throat> I think you know, like everyone knows, like uh, you know, things that look warm might have some coolness to it. You know, and you have to like be able to see it and shit like that. Yeah, yeah, and I'm not really sure yet how to how's the best way to to teach that. That's something I'm kind of working on with my course too, trying to figure out. Yeah. What's the best way to explain that? I'm still working on that. When something looks too warm, <laughs> add a little ultramarine <laughs> yeah. to that bitch and then see if it fixes and you go, getting closer. <laughs> and that means add more. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I feel like it's like, it's weirdly like, you know, like say if I'm mixing a color, right? Mm -hmm. And it's obviously a warm tone and I'm like, oh, it looks wrong. Mm -hmm. Almost all the time, I either got to add fucking ultramarine or burnt umber to that bitch and then it like fixes it. <laughs> <laughs> like put burnt umber and ultramarine on your palette. <laughs> and then when shit looks off, if it needs to get more muddier, muddy, muddled, but not cooler, right. add ultramarine. <laughs> if it needs to get more colder, add some fucking ultramarine or wait. Wait, is it the burnt other umber, way? and then yeah, and then if you want it to get colder and muddy, <laughs> add some ultramarine in that bitch, <laughs> and then sometimes add both. <laughs> yeah, and figure out which one. I don't know. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's the trick, everyone. If you're wondering, <laughs> yeah, uh, Sergio will show you in more depth <laughs> on his class. Yeah, but pretty much, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, pretty yeah. much. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> Go to Josh for the free stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah. But like as far as, like, did you learn anything from marketing on, or about marketing or sales on YouTube? God damn, I don't think so. Yeah. I'm <laughs> I just mean, curious. Sales things, I feel like I've <laughs> learned maybe, I don't know where I learned those things from, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I feel like I pick up knowledge like everywhere I can get it. Yeah. Um, but it's even just being aware of when you're being marketed to. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That can help oh, you. Oh, totally. That Especially when you see good marketing. You go like, oh, mm -hmm. that's cool. I think I like that trick. Yeah. You know? And you definitely start to pick up on marketing cliches, too. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. And then sales are another thing. I think, you know, you can learn, like, the way to... Like like a like a simple thing is just like having a low price point with the idea of drawing people in mm -hmm. with the hopes that they can buy more and more. I think right. they call that like funneling or some shit yeah, like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. um, but I I remember I heard that idea and I was like, yeah, I ever like everyone knows that shit. And then you hear the term and you're like, oh, yeah. I mean, I'm sure there's like there's there's different routes to funneling people or whatever the fuck they call it. But yeah, yeah. But the idea is very simple. It's like have something low with the idea that you might get people that buy bigger items. Mm -hmm. You know, it's that simple. Right. Yeah. Uh, and I feel like that's a very calm, like that you can come to that conclusion very easily by yourself. Mm. Uh, and then, um, but there's, I'm sure there's way more complicated and intricate versions of that mm -hmm. that are have extremely high successful rates and i mean i'm still pretty brand new at this whole sales thing so mm -hmm. uh you know maybe in a year talk to me <laughs> yeah and i'll give you all the fucking ultramarine and fucking burnt umber <laughs> tricks in sales <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah as for right now I'm, i mean i'm still learning this is not a fucking skill i wanted to have <laughs> yeah uh, but it's the skill you need. I know, I know one thing you can do when selling directly is be confident. Like that's one mm -hmm. thing I, I understand is like the more you're, you make it aware that you know what the fuck you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I think the better, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. you know, and the more you're prepared, 
So when someone throws questions at you, the more you're able to respond uh, to comfort their potential worries, the right. better. Yeah. So like something like murals, you're, you're constantly communicating back and forth mm. in those situations. It's very important to make sure they understand that you're at a level of artistry or whatever of being able to cap uh, to accomplish the job they want. Yeah. That you can put them at ease and then you have to make sure you deliver. But, but there's a part of like selling someone on the job on that, that you have to present yourself as a capable, viable person to do the job. They're, they're, they're trying to find a pay, you know, possibly a large amount of money right yeah um and that's a whole nother like realm of sales compared to like online sales stuff mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah those are all those things where you just don't know that it, unless you actually put yourself out there to uh even be in the position to to like know that you have to learn that right like you won't you won't just know that um from painting all the time it's mm -hmm. not until you like actually like try and put yourself out there in front of other people. They're like, okay, that's what they want from me, actually. Right. But it's even things like yeah. in galleries, for instance, if you have like a yeah. bigger show, mm -hmm. some like a lot of galleries, I feel like will tell you like, oh, maybe like have a few small pieces that are like low budget mm -hmm. and uh, like more affordable. And I feel like if you're an established artist, you already know, like, yeah, I know. Like, mm -hmm. like is that something you have to tell everyone? Because like, fuck, mm -hmm. everyone should know that for the most part. Like, like yeah. You should have, you shouldn't have like, I mean, depending on the artist, but like in my mind, I'm like, yeah, I'll probably have like smaller, cheaper pieces and then uh, more like finished, more important pieces, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know if you know that right out the gate, but it's something you learn pretty quickly from, yeah, yeah. from galleries or I, from shows. I feel like a lot of like galleries will like mention that and you're like, yeah, oh. no shit. Uh -oh. but, but there's something like... Well, maybe they do have to for a lot of people. Yeah, and, that, and that's what I'm always like. You know, like yeah, obviously. <laughs> but, I mean, yeah, I don't want to say anything. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, yeah, I mean, it's little things like that. Mm -hmm. that like if a gallery says that, you go like, yeah, obviously. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we're, it, it just adds to like, okay, this. it just adds to the idea that this person knows what they're doing. If they say something, you go like, yeah, I know. Or like, or even if you bring it up before they do, mm -hmm. it just lets them know that you know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. It's like the, you know, the knowledge that comes with the job that can get you a show you want or something like that or or have the gallery trust you more to do what you're supposed to do or, mm -hmm. you know things like that uh that come with um i mean that's not really like direct sales but that's like selling yourself to yeah to a company or something like that yeah yeah it's all just like communication stuff yeah <clears throat> uh but yeah i don't know do we answer the question? Yeah, I think we <laughs> we like went off in all sorts of different branches out for it, but that's kind of what I wanted anyway. <laughs> yeah, I think the, the question I asked was like pretty simple, but I just it was uh, <laughs> sh should you rely on your skills alone? More or less, yeah, or like well, why you shouldn't is mm. more than <laughs> the well, real you, question. You should rely on your skills, <laughs> but you should have more skills than your technical skills right that's what it should be you should gather as many skills to su succeed as possible right technical skills is one it's like a good foundation yeah but you have to have more than that yeah uh, the reason i i um thought about that was because like looking at myself coming out of like or, or starting uh my fine art stuff um, I was just kind of under this misconception that I could coast along on like certain things without having to develop other things. And, right. Yeah. yeah. And I think most artists like, kind of cringe at the idea of like selling yourself or marketing yourself, but it's like, if you break it down, it's just like simple as like getting more people to know who you are. Like every artist wants that shit, you know, it's <laughs> right. like, yeah, you want more eyes on your work. Right. So that's marketing. Like it's that simple. And it's like selling yourself doesn't mean like shucking and jiving and being like, <laughs> boop, boop, like look yeah. at me dance. It's like yeah, yeah. there's there's none of that. Like to me, it's it's more about um, 
Yeah, I don't like, even know if that works for art at all anyway. Yeah, it's like just presenting yourself uh, and the value your art adds to the world or whatever. Right, yeah. In exactly. whichever way. Mm -hmm. But I, th I think, I think I, I just get annoyed by like the like, the artist that wants to play like moody and quiet and whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't really care about, the, like, to me, that's like the artist I don't want to be around, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. There's something that annoys the shit out of me about that. Uh -huh. Just as like a human being, like <laughs> all the artists I get along with aren't trying to pull off this, like, because it's like, bitch, I know you fart and shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, you're not fucking silky smooth all the time. <laughs> Stop pretending. God damn. <laughs> be a human fucking being. <laughs> But yeah, just kind of like the sales is just adding, showing the value of your work, like as showing it to the, after you get eyeballs on it, letting, un, having people understand how art, this artwork adds value to their experience in this world or some shit. And that's, and that's how you sell things. Because once people agree that something is valuable, then they buy it. Right. Yep. I mean... In a nutshell, yeah, that's pretty much what it comes uh, down to. <laughs> yeah, now go be successful and make me <laughs> mad that I told you all these things. <laughs> yeah. So I can be like, hey, I want to be successful. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, Why did I give away the whole farm? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. I want every. Uh, I. That's the other thing is like the whole crabs in the bucket bullshit. It's like I really do think the more successful artists get, the more successful artists will be. Like, Yeah. The more the the shit grows, the bigger the the whole. You know what I mean? Like yeah, absolutely. Like backpack rappers don't make money if Jay Z doesn't exist. To be honest, you hmm. know what I mean? Then they're just some fucking hole in the wall. Like right. no one's ever heard of them. Shit. Yeah. But the more like Jay Z exists, the more Taleb becomes a name. Mm -hmm. The more like the super obscure fucking like asap rock mm -hmm. becomes a more common name because right you know the fan base grows uh you might start off with uh that walk child yeah, yeah that walk. <laughs> uh and then upgrade right you might start off reading children's book you know what i mean <laughs> and then grow up you might fucking Start by eating PB and J's, but now you're eating fucking. <laughs> Start with that ravioli. Uh, yeah, raviolis, and now you're at a Michelin star spot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so th the more success, the better. Just as long as they're not like Jackson Pollock or some shit. Like <laughs> yeah. That. Well, actually, Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> uh, awesome. Did All we right, it? we did it. So you do you do the sign off, Sergio. Yeah. I only say that so it makes it more awkward. By the way, so you do, yeah. Sergio. You do the sign off now. <laughs> it's been way to drag, guys. If you're still listening, you know, fuck off or whatever. <laughs> Is that it? That's it. <laughs>